Okay, this is about uh, making document communications accessible. Um, basically, it's about um, the PDF UA standard. PDF UA stands for U PDF Universal Accessibility. <coughs> Who is, uh, has ever heard about PDF UA before? Oh, great. So we can skip the first part, which, which would be uh, an introduction into PDF UA, a few words, um, and then about validation of PDF UA, and then uh, um, something about conversion. So the whole uh, idea of this presentation um, was um, to, I don't know, allow you to understand what PDF UA actually is. And, and what what we can expect from this standard. It's, it's an ISO standard. And um, yeah, in order to make you familiar with what, what we think one should know when, he, when, when somebody wants to start with actually using PDF UA for um, a document um, uh, publishing and so forth. I will be doing this presentation, my, my name is Dietrich von Segern, I'm working for Color Software, and I will be giving this presentation together with David van, van Driesche from For Peace. Okay. So this actually is the PDF UA standard, um, and the PDF UA standard, as I've said before, is for uh, universal accessibility, uh, for accessible PDF files, and no surprise, it has many rules for uh, accessible PDFs. So what, how a PDF sh should look inside, how the internal structure of a PDF file should be built in order to make a PDF file accessible. So it's based on uh, ISO 32000, so you cannot read it, but it's here in the subtitle on the, on the PDFA UA standard. So it is a, a couple of rules um, and that are based on the PDF specification itself. And it just say, okay, you should use this and that part of the PDF specification in this and that way in order to, to create accessible PDF files. Um, and it has to be said in this context that uh, if you want to create actually an accessible PDF file, this standard is of almost no use of you, not, not on an immediate level, not for you yourself, it's, it's of some use because it only makes sense to somebody who is very familiar with internal PDF structure, but it, ha it is um, uh, hopefully or, or probably a big use for you because it has some consequences like um, it will enforce existing legal requirements that are, are out there then that uh, um, uh, uh, say that certain publications has to be made available in, in an accessible way. This will enforce that, such requirements because up until now there simply it was not possible to say whether a given PDF file is accessible or not. And that is, has now been changed by PDF UA which by the way came out uh, I think uh, within this year. So it's, 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 it's a recent standard. And then in addition to that, on the, on the legal level, new provisions that, that will require PDF files or, or any documents to be um, uh, accessible are more likely. So this is on the legal level and on the, on the technical level, um, tools, it's much easier right now to create new solutions that, that allow users to create accessible PDFs are, are more e easier to create because it's now clearly defined what actually is an accessible PDF and what but not so this is a new thing and uh, it's also easier not just uh, easier not just to create software that allows you to create accessible PDF files it's also easier to uh, write software that takes advantage of accessible features like uh, uh, the uh, structure um, we will see that uh, that that has to be present in um, accessible PDF file Okay, these are uh, a couple of internal rules that the uh, PDF UA standard um, uh, 
applies like all content in the PDF file needs to be part of a structure tree. This is a, a view on the structure tree that has to be present in an accessible PDF file and uh, in, in a way Acrobat displays it uh, when you open the, the tech toolbar pane over here. So this is a provision every all content in the PDF file has to be part of the structure tree. It's, it's a parallel tree to the, to the page uh, um, structure and you can click on over here and it will uh, highlight the, the respective um, object on, on, the, on the page. Also, all headings, headlines in your text have to be part of a hierarchical order in the correct way. Reading order has to be correct. There needs to be alternate text present, so an alternate text des description for um, all graphics that are uh, in, a, in the PDF file and so forth and so forth. There needs to be a language, so an, an, an indication whether this is a German uh, uh, PDF file or an English or whatever. So these are uh, some rules. I, th I think it's not so important right now to, to understand everything or to, to remember everything in detail here. But what I want to explain here is, and, and that is important for, for workflows that, that, uh, that want to, to uh, create accessible PDF files, some of these rules can easily be uh, validated by machines. So it's easy for a machine to find out whether uh, all content is or well, which content on a page is part of the structure T and which one is not. But the standard said all relevant content needs to be part of the structure tree. And for a machine, it's not, not possible to decide whether content that is not part of the structure T, whether this content is relevant or not. Also, the, whether there is a hierarchical order of headings and whether this is correct, that, that, that can, uh, or whether the, the hierarchical order is, is um, syntactically correct, that, that a machine can find out. But whether this actually is correct towards the content, that a machine cannot decide. And what I want to explain with this slide is uh, something can be validated uh, on a machine level, but other things need to be validated by humans. So, and this is, um, uh, 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 um, different to other PDF-based ISO standards like PDF-A or so, where you can just do a machine validation and you're done with PDF-UA, you would usually have to have uh, uh, some, some human validation involved. And we have an example to that later on, and this example is being given by David. Yes. So that's exactly the concept I want to talk about. Um, I, I want to show you two tools. I'm not going to do it in a presentation, but we'll actually try to do it in software, which is always much nicer. So I want to show you two free tools that you can use to check PDF UA files. And hopefully that makes it clear what you can accomplish in an automatic way and what you cannot accomplish in an, uh, in an automatic way. Yes? You're using another. Yes. Are you both uh, at the exact thing there? I have no idea. I was given this, so I'm happy. Okay. <laughs> so the first tool is called PAC and uh, or PAC. And I have to do this in a virtual environment because it only runs on Windows, strangely enough. So um, just going to launch that. And I'll zoom in in a second so that you can see it a little better. But it's a, uh, it's a free tool that was developed by a Swiss company, correct? Yeah. And that, um, as purpose, has validation of PDF UA files. You can download this and play with it yourself if you have a Windows machine. And um, what I'll do is, do we have anyone here who works for the IRS? No, that makes it easier. Um, yeah, you all, that's true. Every American does, yeah, to a certain extent. Um, what I've done here is I went on the IRS website, and they have a whole support program for people with disabilities. And one of the things they have is a page that, as a title, has um, PDF form, accessible PDF forms. So I thought, this is great. And I had to download about. 10 files in order to find something that had some accessibility features. 
And the one I have here is actually one that I found on there that has some things in there. So I just loaded that in, uh, in pack and I'm going to run the software on it. And what you can see is that you get a very easy to understand, in a sense, overview. I get um, a list of green check marks and then a bunch of red crosses. That's not very difficult to, in to interpret. That means that this file is partially good, partially not good. Right? This is what an automatic tool can do. It simply takes the list of requirements for PDF UA, it performs some tests on it, and it gives you a pass or a fail. Now, the question, of course, is, what does this tell you about the real world? Does this mean that the file is actually good? Is it going to work for people that are using screen reader technology, for example, or is it not going to work? You can look in a little bit more detail here. I can do reports and um, actually zoom in on that. And that gives me the same kind of overview, but now I can look at more detail. So if I want to know why there is a problem with content, I could look at that and it tells me that there is a problem with tagged content. OK, so let's see what that is. That's a vector object that is not being tagged. And if I click on that, it even shows me on which page of the document and which element it is. Now, this particular problem is, uh, and this might, this might already look way too technical for what you would want to do. But actually, if you look at what happens here, there is a hyperlink in the document. The hyperlink is underlined, and that line that is used to underline the hyper hyperlink text is not tagged, and it should be tagged. And in this case, it probably should be tagged as an artifact, which means it's not important. Uh, if you're a screen reader, you can ignore that content, right? But it should be tagged. That's what PDF UA says. So this is an error, but it might not be of great importance to someone who has to use assistive technology. Now, let me attract your attention to two other things. First of all, this nice red cross next to natural language. And that says that um, there is a whole bunch of language tags missing. Actually, this document has no language tags whatsoever. And it will, again, show you which objects have a problem in that regard, uh, which is just about anything. So remember this one, the language. I'll come back to that in the second uh, part. And then I have structure tree, but that actually looks quite nice. So Dietrich told you that everything in the document needs to be part of the structure tree, which, which tells a screen reader what type of content this is, whether it's a heading or a paragraph or an image. Or... And this looks correct, because it's all green check marks, right? So we're, we're happy with that. There are some warnings in here as well, but they have to do with figures and forms. And uh, we don't really know whether that's important. But I'm seeing a lot of green stuff, so it's good. So this is TAC. Uh, automatic checking, it gives you a very quick way to see pass or fail a number of different requirements in the, uh, in the standard. OK, let's close Windows. And uh, I have the same document here in my Mac environment. And I can open that in Acrobat. And in Acrobat, I have another tool installed called PDF Go HTML. It says plugin from Kalas. It's a free plugin. And at least the version that I'm running here has this uh, nice window that is called Easy Reader. It's a screen reader. It's not a professional screen reader. You wouldn't use this if you really had a problem um, with uh, viewing uh, things, for example, and you, you need text to be read to you. But it is actually quite nice to see whether the document behaves correctly. And I'm not sure this is going to be very audible. I'll try. So I just opened up the document. I opened up PDF Go HTML, and I'm going to ask it to read the text to me. I can do many other things, like jumping from heading to heading and so on. That's the advantages of using PDF UA. But I'm just going to ask it to read something to me. Attention. Attention. This form is provided for informational purposes only. Now, if you uh, appear in red, similar to the official it's painful for me to listen to that. I'm not sure how much you heard of that, actually. But if you listen to what it does, it reads it in English, but it has a really bad accent. And the reason for that is because the document doesn't contain any language tags, the reader 
can, well, what it does is simply use the default voice that I have selected in here. And because I happen to be from Belgium and Dutch, the default is a Dutch voice. So it starts reading the English, but using a Dutch voice and the result is horrible. It actually reminds very much to how Belgians sound when they try to speak English sometimes. It's horrible to listen to. So uh, this is wrong. I can, I can correct it easily. I could go down here and uh, select a nice uh, American English voice and it, the result would be much better. But that's not the point. This is a, an accessible document. So when I download this, I would expect my screen reading software to start reading it in the natural language of the document. And if the tags were in the document, that's actually what would have happened. Now, for this document, it's fairly easy to fix. I select a different language and I'm done. If you have documents where you have a mix of different languages, even if it's only um, street names or names of cities that are in there and that need to be pronounced in a different language, then the document really needs to be tagged in order to be usable. Uh, if you can't read it and you have to listen to this and it uses the same voice, it must be hell. Okay, so this is one. Let's close this up. And I'm to show you the next problem. I'm going to use another window that I have in here. And this will... Okay, very good. Let me make that a little oh, behave here, a little smaller and then zoom in. What this does is look at the PDF, look at the structure information in the PDF and the tagging, and extract the text from the PDF document and show me an HTML um, rendering of that. So it converts it to HTML, basically. Now, this looks fairly OK if I look at it in the, uh, in the standard way of, uh, of, of examining it. But the nice thing about PDF uh, Go HTML is that it can show me, different, show me this information in different ways. And what I selected here is the structure overview. And that shows me that, well, if I look at this document, I have a paragraph here, and that's, uh, that looks correct. But this first word, if you remember the document, was attention. And it was actually fairly big. So I would expect that to be either a heading or a document title or something like that. If you look at this as humans would do, it's very, very obvious that this is a title that belongs to the rest of the content. So the fact that that is tagged as a paragraph is obviously a mistake. And if you scroll through it, you'll see a whole bunch of other uh, errors. There is a heading here, or at least a structure element for a heading. There is no text in it. And if I scroll through the rest of the document, you'll see that there are virtually no headings in that document whatsoever. Now, that doesn't sound so bad, because I can still have my screen reader read the text. But you have to realize that if you can't see this document, the only thing you can do is have the screen reader read the different headings to you. And that's your way to scroll through the document, which we would do with a mouse. Now, because there are no headings, the document is virtually useless. I would have to read it sequentially in order to find the bit that I'm interested in. So it's, it's cool to um, show that the IRS is not doing the right thing. That's one thing. But what I really want to highlight is that the automatic check only can do so much. The automatic check can get the list of requirements and tell you whether they are met or not met, give you that pass or fail. When Dietrich said you also need a human to look at these documents to really judge whether they are good enough, this is an illustration of that. Even if the document passes, you still have to make sure that the structure information and the tagging in there is correct. And the only real way to do that is by looking at what is in there or by reading assistive devices, such as a screen reader, to go through the exercise yourself. Now, that's a whole lot of problems. The last thing I want to do is show you that this kind of document um, actually gives you other uses except for uh, screen readers. This is a low vision preview that simply uses bigger text, I could have that reversed, which for some people is actually much easier to read. Or if you have someone with a dyslexia, for example, you can display the content with a special font that is designed to make it easier to read for them. So 
there are definitely good reasons to make the document PDF UA compatible. And if it is, then uh, PDF Go HTML shows you that it is correct and shows you a number of different things that you could do with it. OK, that's the demo I wanted to share. So let me close this up and go back to presentation. And then I'm going to skip these slides because they were only here for the unlikely event that the demo wouldn't work. Uh, the important thing here, perhaps, is that there is a link there for the, uh, the pack tool. And I believe there is also a link, yes, for PDF Go HTML. They're both free tools, so feel free to download them and uh, try them out on documents your, uh, yourself. And then Dieter, it's back to you. Thanks, David. Um... Yes, so the assumption or the idea of this presentation actually is, okay, now we are in a stage, we have checked out the PDF files that maybe we, we are a company, we are, we are going to, to or we, we, are, we want to establish processes in order to publish our PDF files in an accessible way right now. We've checked some of the documents uh, uh, that we have that we currently publish and we've seen that there are a couple of problems. Uh, we've done that using free validation tools, so it doesn't cost us any money so far. But what can we do in order to, to change that, in order to now, from now on, create uh, uh, accessible PDF files? So first thing to do is, which authoring application can we use for that? Um, there are, as of today, I think only two things, at least, at least um, from the general authoring applications, and that is Microsoft Word for Windows and Adobe InDesign. And I very briefly want to go uh, within the rest of this presentation about um, uh, what to look for and, 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 and what to do in, the, in, the, in, the, in these applications. Um, this is Microsoft Word. Uh, first and important, um, use one of the recent versions, 2010 or better, 2013. And then, and th this is a, just a general rule, um, use styles, style sheets in, instead of uh, simple text formatting with, uh, in, the, in the example that David has given where the word attention uh, just was uh, 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 said using bold format, bold text, uh, bold font or so, um, don't do that, just use a style and then usually the word attention will uh, end up in, a, in the PDF as a heading. Do not use fancy layout because it's, it's, it's the chance that you just, uh, without any, any additional efforts or any additional take, uh, care, uh, create an ac accessible PDF is almost zero, so uh, you will have to do additional work for that, and you will just make your life uh, more difficult if you use very fancy layouts. And then we have seen that you need alternate text for all annotations and images, so you can do that with Word. Uh, you can by simply using the, the word export thing, uh, export structure text, so everything is there. You can create PDF UA from Word, uh, but you don't, uh, sh but you should not use a printer driver. You, sh you should use either the built-in save as PDF feature from Word or uh, the Acrobat export that would work as well. But as I have said, so this only works for simple Word files and it also requires some knowledge, some experience. Um, um, there are some tools that, that make your life easier around from XY Media and from NetCentric. Um, and just to very briefly introduce you to um, Access PDF for Word. Um, this has a role-based workflow model where an experienced user just creates a word template, a template that has all the styles that you want to use in your document um, uh, creation processes, and you can distribute these templates to the operators in your company, and operators would just use them. And then there is a task pane uh, that helps you uh, creating uh, accessible PDF files. Uh, it is the solution is currently in beta, so the ship it's it's going to ship in March 2015. 
And this is just a screenshot on this tool, access PDF. You have the, the, the tool pane at the, at the right hand side. And this is, uh, I've zoomed in here. And this is a task pane. And this allows me actually to add alternate text to a figure in my uh, Word file. So it's, it's a Word, Word plugin, as you can see. Okay, now we we know a little bit of Word, and this is uh, just you can use Word, as I have said, but you cannot use Word, for instance, for Macintosh. You cannot use iWorks for also for Macintosh. Excel won't give you any text, so a PowerPoint has some tagging in, in, in the PDF output, but the, the tagging is not not very good, so it has lots of weaknesses. So far um, about Word. Um, InDesign, I have already mentioned that you can also use InDesign, but again, you need to know what, what to do. You need to use steel style sheets in order to map these to text. You have to set the language correctly so that, that an English text is actually being read in English and not in Dutch. Uh, the list and table features have to be used, the article pane in order to create the overall structure of the PDF file. And again, for, for images, I have to define the um, alternate text. So a couple of things that I can do. It's not, not a big thing to do. But you, you need to know where to, where to go to and, and what things to do in order to, to create a proper uh, accessible PDF file. And there again, there is a professional solution which is made to tag for InDesign from company Axayo, and this simply guides you through the process. So there are seven steps that you uh, need to take care of, and it gives you uh, some additional information, and it does not require you to get to the uh, to the several different sections within the uh, InDesign user interface. You simply can do that by uh, moving from one step from one task to the other uh, with this tool. So if you are using InDesign for your uh, document creation, this is a, a, a thing to, to have a look at. So, but now, what can we do if we just have the PDF and uh, want to just improve the PDF that we currently have in order to, to be better accessible and to, be, to, to comply with the PDF UA standard? You can do that in Acrobat, so it, it's possible, but again, you will have to, to, to know what you're doing and where to look for, so it's kind of cumbersome, but it's possible. And again, there are some professional tools here from the same vendors that I have already mentioned, like from XY Media and from Netcentric. And these are, I think, the tools that are uh, frequently used for, for, for this task. Um, but um, again, it's always better to, to get back to the authoring application. So it, it, it requires more work to do it based on a PDF. So in, in, in every case, it makes sense whenever possible, go back to the creation, to the tool, to the authoring application in order to um, uh, create accessible PDF. But if you have to, it's better to use a professional tool but you need to have some experience in order to work with that. And for instance, this Access PDF Quick Fix, it, has, it does not require you to, to go to every single tag that you have. You can uh, uh, improve the whole document by a couple of one-click fixing bug buttons. It's a standalone application. It's only available for Windows. And um, yeah, he's, this is just a... a, a these are a couple of the one-click fixing buttons, so I think that that is um, um, enough for that. So there are a couple of professional tools around. And now, finally, um, what are you going to do if you want to program towards PDF UA? So you don't have a layout application or uh, an authoring application, you have some content in a database or so, and you want to crea create an accessible PDF from there. There are many, many libraries around that, you would help, that would help you to do so, but if you want to uh, create accessible, so they, these tools would allow you to create PDF in general, but if you want to create PDF UA with structure and tagging information, there are only a few tools around like the Adobe PDF library, PDF lib, 
or iText, um, and also we will have a solution which is called PDF chip. Yeah, I think that that is what we wanted to to show to you about accessible PDF and PDF UA. Any questions? Yes? Uh, so, so it it, it makes uh, the I'm I, I'm not pretty sure I'm not fully sure whether I, are. I need to be there. So I need to be there. Um, and we need to repeat the question. So let me tr let me try if I understand your question and repeat it so that it's on the uh, on the video at the same time. I think what you what you're asking is whether uh, it would be better to just forget about all of the complicated formatting in the InDesign document and simply use made to tag, or so uh, would, would that be faster in the end, I think, is the question. Uh, okay, I go there. We will find out. Um, whether it, it makes the process of, of tagging uh, the InDesign file faster for, for you not just by by creating the, the 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 result file better but but makes you make making your processing or your the creation of the document faster right that is the case yes <laughs> um, so it, it guides you through the process and 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 it, it's not required for you to to go to the different palettes and so on the the different uh, 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 areas of the user interface of InDesign. It just allows you to access everything that you can do step by step in InDesign with a single plugin, and and thereby it makes the whole process faster, right? But let me add something to that. Yeah, I'm going to use this one because otherwise we. Uh crazy but it's not an it's it's actually not an either or if you start with an InDesign document that is completely not formatted at all where no one has paid any attention to how the document was structured and styles and so on yes made to tag will make it quicker to clean that up but it's still quicker to start with an InDesign document that is good to begin with I think both are important. And for all of these authoring applications and all of the tools, actually, the key here is that the better the authoring application, but the more care you spend in designing the template or the, the base document to begin with, um, the easier it's going to be to make that into a PDF UA file in the end. So it's actually both. But designing, uh, taking enough care to design the template correctly is always an important point.